the chance of it go, of instability occurring and these uh, the segment going into a listhesis so there's a, this is what i was saying this is like the front of the disc and then your facet joints at the back which have to work perfectly for, so that biomechanically this is a stable segment uh, now what happens you know it's in spite of a person having a normal a disc when a person is, when a child is born as one grows older there is degeneration which occurs in your disc along with that degeneration there will be facet arthropathy as well now these in together lead to a phase of instability in the middle which and eventually they start uh, kind of stabilizing with osteophytes but this uh, phase of instability uh, in the middle is where the where the listhesis etc can occur going on to now you know once you you know the a little bit of the anatomy now listhesis basically what is it it is your forward slippage of one vertebral body or segment over the other and there are various causes for it the wills uh, and various uh, classifications as well have been mentioned but uh, this is the one which is most commonly used and it is easy to understand so it's basically your etiological classification you've got your congenital type or dysplastic variety which i will explain later on the most common of these is your isthmic and your degenerative type of listhesis and then you have your traumatic pathological and most my favorite post surgical iatrogenically caused listhesis so uh, this is uh, this is what was described by uh, wills mcnab in the early days and it is still uh, used now the most common of these are your isthmic type and your degenerative type right so in isthmic type we've got three three varieties again in listhesis your type uh the subtype a where there is a uh, break or lysis in your pars interarticularis now why this happened there were various theories which have been proposed in the early times about why a lysis occurs but the one which is most commonly uh, accepted is that that they are basically stress fractures which uh, fail to heal and this leads to a chronic non union and they go into listhesis now how does that occur you know this if you consider a vertebral segment you've got your anterior structures which we had described your disc and your all pll and then you have your load bearing on your facet joint at the back now this stresses from your facet and your disc they are transmitted to each other via the bone in the middle which is your lamina and then your pars and through the pedicle now pedicle is probably the strongest part of the bone there but your pars interarticularis now this is the bone which is probably the weakest of the entire lot and that is where this break may occur and then once that the break occurs there is nothing to transmit or share the stresses and then this the chance of listhesis increases so this is what happens in the most common type of isthmic listhesis in your subtype a the next is your subtype b which is basically a Uh, elongation of pars this is also associated with listhesis you may not see a break there this is usually because of multiple stress fractures which go on healing with time they are rarer compared to your subtype a then you have got your subtype c which is an acute fracture of the pars this is extremely rare to occur and then your most common type again is a very common type is your degenerative listhesis now degenerative listhesis is uh, of course seen in the elderly age and this occurs because of uh, as we discussed the degeneration over uh, of the disc along with your facet degeneration where it's in it is not unable to support the, the stresses and they go into listhesis very commonly this is a, a very important sign uh, which we see is a uh, effusion in your facet joints where you see a lot of fluid on t2 weighted images here in the facets which indicates instability and uh, <coughs> along with that you may also see a a change in the tropism of your facet joints what that means is that this uh, the facets normally are uh, or oriented from lateral to medial as we go from posterior to anterior and these uh, with degeneration start be get becoming more sagittally oriented and this also increases the chance of listhesis so this uh, also is a pathophysiology of your so uh, degenerative type of listhesis other than that you also have traumatic listhesis which is a uh, trauma to your neural arch of fracture in the neural arch in any place other than the pars interarticularis pathological spondylolisthesis may occur if there is a pathology causing weakness in the bone causing lysis 
which may be osteopetrosis, Paget's disease, or a metastasis, which can sometimes cause these kind of things. And then your dysplastic or your congenital type. This is the, a true congenital type of lithesis. And it is important to dif uh, understand this lithesis is very different from your isthmic lithesis because, uh, because you know, these are much more unstable. And if you need to fix them, you'll need to put in multiple uh, uh, holes, you know, proximally and distally. So it is different from a normal isthmic lithesis wherein just one above, one below is enough. Uh, the, the pathologically, if you see on the x-rays, you'll see rounding of your sacrum. You'll see a trapezoidal type of L5 vertebral body. The sacrum will be vertically uh, placed, whereas the pelvic incidence or the uh, sacral index is much more in a lytic type of listhesis. And there will be a compensatory hyperlordosis of your uh, lumbar spine along with this. And of course, a junctional kyphosis. So, uh, this is the type, this is, that is your dysplastic type of listhesis. And then the iatrogenic spondylolisthesis. Now this is a, a variety which occurs post-surgically. If somebody has been doing a laminectomy and has been overzealous in doing a laminectomy and you don't leave out enough amount of pars interarticularis, then this, the pars may break and then they go, these go into a listhesis. Or if you damage the facet joints also while you are doing uh, uh, your laminectomy procedures. So this is relatively rarer if it is done by, you know, the newer techniques where we do, do only laminotomies and minimally invasive techniques, but in more aggressive laminectomies, this can occur. Going on to the symptoms, basically, it's the same as your lumbar canal stenosis symptoms. It's where claudication pain may occur, radiculopathy may occur because of pinching of your nerve roots. Now, <clears throat> The nerve root which is pinched, this is your exiting root at this segment and then the traversing root below. The traversing root is affected in degenerative type of listhesis, whereas in your isthmic type of listhesis, you will probably, you will, you may get exiting root affection as well. And that may be because of your pars, the break there, your fibro fatty uh, tissue there causing compression of the nerve root. So this is in a little bit about how the classification is, which will help you to plan your, your surgeries. Uh, a little bit on the risk factors of slip progression. This was basically set for congenital type, but it can, you can use these, some of the points in uh, lytic and degenerative type as well. Uh, growth spurts during this time, girls more than boys, people who have especially gait abnormalities or postural abnormalities, these patients have a higher risk of going into uh, progression. Radiographically, of course, vertical sacrum, dysplastic type of listhesis, uh, more than 50% slip. These are the uh, points which favor towards progression of the slip. And the most important, I think, is if you have a properly demonstrated instability on your flexion and extension views, you can then, you know, say, okay, this is more at a risk. Having this um, idea about how a uh, listhesis occurs and what the pathophysiology is, you can then go on to start planning the management and now which patients need to be operated, which patients need to be conserved and how you decide on that will be taken up by the next speaker. So, uh, Shitij, uh, 